Hello, internet friends. Welcome back to the channel. Um, okay, so we're not in full condensed YouTube nuggets mode, but we're one step closer. Um, quick housekeeping. Patreon exists. I have one. You should be on it. Um, if you are interested at all in getting some one-on-one -on -one coaching, go check out Patreon. It's in the link below. Um, also, things that exist, Upper Park Disc Golf. I can't talk. Upper Park Disc Golf. Um, they make really good bags. They're a really cool company. Um, they do a good job supporting their ambassador people, who are me. Um, I like them. Go check them out. If you want to spend some money on disc golf stuff, that's a great way to support them and me at the same time and save money. Um, housekeeping. Done. Uh, okay, so we're talking about how to clear your front hip, which we talked about in the last video, but we didn't call it that. And this is YouTube, so we should use as many buzzwords as possible. Um, but it, ultimately, this that's a joke, if you weren't aware. Um, but clearing the front hip is this phrase, like, two or three years ago when I was doing a bunch of research and trying to understand all this stuff. The phrase, clear the front hip, kept coming up, especially around sea bass and stuff. Um, and it like it I didn't understand it's like what is what does clear the hip mean like I know it's a thing that needs to happen it's a phrase that all the people who seem very intelligent talk about but I don't know what it means um, and even when I knew what it meant I was like okay great but how does that apply to my throw so this is how it applies in my opinion um, so basically um, it really relates to the most common errors that I see the two most common errors um, one of them being a weight shift issue, which I talked about again last video. So, um, let's simplify. Everything is on a flat plane. I am a two-dimensional creature. I exist only on this two-dimensional plane. Um, it's not going to make me very good at disc golf, but here we are. So, I can't, as a rule, I can't move anything off of this plane. Um, so, when I go into my brace, I have to move on this, shift my weight on this plane. I have to stop my weight on this plane, and when I do that the vector of my momentum is directly opposite to the vector of my pushing on the ground to stop. Those two vectors hit each other and cancel out and I stop with no rotation of my hips. Not effective. I'm moving sideways, I'm stopping sideways, everything stops in line. Uh, where this gets useful for disc golf is if I am allowed to be a three-dimensional creature, I'm gonna keep my weight shift going exactly on that plane and I'm going to move my front foot placement off of that plane. So now when I shift my weight, if I turn 90 degrees, so first demo, I'm stepping and stopping on the same plane. Second demo, I'm offsetting my foot, but I'm still shifting my weight towards you such that my center of gravity stays on a third rail between my two feet rails. So front foot on a rail this way, back foot on a rail this way, weight shift on a third rail in the center. So when I set up here, offset my front foot, and then shift my weight towards the front, it makes me have to reset my rear foot behind me so that I don't fall, so that I'm in balance, I have a pyramid of support. So that's what I want. When I do that and resist the ground, watch what happens. I'm gonna shift my hips towards the target behind my front heel and then resist the ground. And I get this hip crumple zone thing where my hips go from one, two, three, four, my hips and my feet are in that order. And then when I push on the ground, I get one, three, two, four. So my hips have switched sides, not because I have elvis my hips, but because I'm pushing on the ground. And then the ground, my leg pushes and pushes on this hip and clears it to the right, that's the magic and this hip is allowed to continue forward. So that's, I talked about it last video, I talked about it in the crumple zone video, that's my silly little name for this whole concept. And this kind of hip snap is what gets people past 350 or 400 feet. Like that's, this is how it works. If you're gonna throw, use your whole body to throw with what I see as the most fundamental solid mechanics. So what happens when this doesn't work? When it doesn't work, throwing that way, you are probably shifting your weight 
too much directly onto your front foot and then a number of things happen. You can, this foot, very commonly, this leg will rotate in place and then come up and then come around rather than moving east-ish or southeast a little bit first. Um, you can just get jammed up and your legs can come together. You can do rear hip rounding, which is a new phrase that I just made up. Um, and that's where your front leg becomes a post and your rear hip comes around. So this, this hip path becomes round. You know, it's the same as rounding with your arm, but it's rounding with your hip too. It's even worse. Um, another more subtle thing that can happen is, especially if my leg is rotating in place and then coming up, I can end up with my force drifting too much over my brace. And this can be subtle. It might not look like you're absolutely falling the heck over your brace, but it can be just a little bit too much forward lean in frames right after release where you have a little bit too much of like this type of energy going on. And what we really want is a solid pyramid of support that doesn't really move a whole lot. I mean, your leg is gonna move. Your legs are gonna crumple zone shift, but you're not gonna move forward. And then a, a spinal column on top of that that's mostly just rotating in place and not doing a whole lot of tipping forward. That framework being solid and not tipping forward at all or jamming up at all is what allows the force of your momentum to be redirected into the tip of your whip. And that's what makes throws magically powerful. It's physics. And the first couple times you feel it, it's pretty enlightening and it's very fun. It's pretty intoxicating. But it can be difficult to get back to once you've felt it. It's a, it's a very challenging motion to master. Uh, so that's an overview of what goes wrong. Um, and what I think the best way to correct it is to, to make sure that we have the motions we want in our hips and we don't have any spilling over the brace. So the kind of one of the most important things is this is just giving a visual indicator of what angle my hips are on. So as I come into my brace, during the part of the brace that's active, leading right up to the hit and right after the hit, I want my rear hip to be going down. If my rear hip is not going down, it's probably because I'm getting too much stuck on this rear foot and my pyramid of support is not stable. I'm doing a little too much pushing off of my back foot. So when I push off of my back foot, my hips stay pretty level. Maybe I tip a little bit this way, but that's not going to get me the containment that I need in my front leg and my brace and my hips to redirect energy into the disc. So I need this rear hip to actually be going down, which means I need space left to right for my leg to move. If my leg is stuck behind me and it can't move, then I have to go up over my brace or something else has to give, I have to get jammed up. <clears throat> but I want space here. That's why the one leg drills start with a ton of space. There's plenty of room for my rear hip to drop down under. In a more full throw, there's still plenty of room for my rear hip to drop down under. Um, so that's kind of what we're going for with all of these progressive drills that I've set up. The one legs and then moving to weight shift, stand sills, and then moving to a one step and then trying to integrate that movement into your full throw. All the while bouncing back and forth from version one to two to one to three to one to four and just trying to assimilate pieces of them into your movement. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the best I can do for an understanding of it. Um, but you're trying, essentially you're trying to get your, so we've, we've thought about swing plane a lot and elbow orientation relative to swing plane, not good, much more useful. Now we're going to be aware of hip plane. So this is generally not a productive hip plane. There's no way for me to stop here when I get on this hip plane. 
Now my rear hip goes up and down under and there's a lot more of a stop point built in. So be aware of your hip plane. And the best way to get this crumple zone hip mechanic to work is to be on a hyzer and make sure that the rear hip is going down and under. So the front hip, you're gonna load the front leg and unload the front leg in such a way that the front hip clears and the rear hip is allowed to continue down and forward without rounding around the front hip. So basically you're just trying to create a hip switch, boom, that happens in place without any tipping forward or spilling over your brace. So take that mindset and go back to the beginning of the one leg drills and apply it to the one leg drill. See if you can make that feeling a focal point of awareness when you're doing this drill. So it's not about power, it's not about speed, it's not about throwing hard. It's about being process oriented rather than results oriented and focusing on the feeling of how your hips are gonna move to generate power in the arm. All right, internet, good luck. Ask questions if you've got them in the comments down below and we'll see you next time.